Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today, we're at the World of Wheels in Rosemont, Illinois. With that being said, I'm with my friend Bob Starzak. Bob, what do they call you in your car club? Buick Bob. Buick Bob. So when they actually name you after the car club, let me just show the car club real quick. The Chicagoland chapter Buick Club. Tell me, what toy did you bring today? I brought a 67 GS 400, uh, one of 1,883 made out of the California factory, and it has a lot of firsts in it for that year. Tell us some of the firsts while we're going around the car. Let me go right to the car. And you've had this one since 2016. Right, it was on the restoration. It just got, uh, just finished the restoration in November, so it was done for the muscle car show. It was invited to muscle car class of 67 because it's a rare car. Uh, it's the first year for the 400 motor. They've replaced the 401 nail head that started back in uh, 1953. Uh, it's the first year for power disc brakes. First year for what they call rally wheels. They show those. So first year for disc brakes. First year for disc brakes. And first year what they call rally wheels because uh, Buick didn't have a wheel to fit on the disc brakes, so they had to go to Chevy, and they made up the hubcap that was cheaper to do the hubcap than the whole wheel. And they kept the wheels going for a few more years, and they put these on 67 and 68. Uh, first year for radial tires for any General Motors car could have been ordered for General Motors. First year for General Motors tires. And then uh, they had a sticker, sticker in the glove compartment that I haven't been able to find yet. It said on there, radial tires appear flat. Please check pressure. And that was in the glove compartments of these cars. Back just a little bit farther. I want to get that whole car in. My wife calls it the jet because of the white color with the black. Uh, it was a rotisserie, uh, complete rotisserie paint job on the car. Everything basically replaced. This tail looks a little 67 GTO, doesn't it, with right. the, the windshield? People don't believe it. There's a four inch difference between the GTO and the Skylar over the Chevelle. And is it shorter? No, no, I'm talking just by the deck pad over oh, there from really? the top. Just that little area, there's four inches of difference. But basically the cars are all the same size. Uh, I did was able to find the plate from 1966, 1967, California plate. I said this was uh, came out of Fla uh, Fairmont plant in uh, California. And of 1883 GS is made there. And like I say, this thing has an air injection, air injector pump, which is basically a small pump for 1967. We're going to see that when we get to the engine. But there was a GS340. There was a GS. And, and the bigger one was yours, the, the GS400. And one of the ways to tell that was this black panel here. If it was a 340, correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, but that was the same color. It was a silver. Yeah, was okay. silver. all 340s were silver at that time. That's the only color they came in. Right. Nice. There's a back book in there with all the stuff on the car. Let's take a little look at your fact book. I like the fact books. So we're going to just let people pause a little bit. If you go back, there's a GS section in there. Okay. Go ahead. Let me let you be the master of this. Those are cool features. This is where I got most of my information off of this. For the car, I found this book at a swap meet. It's two-door GS400. And that's where it has these pup cap and trim wings were available with this brake only. Look at that. It's so great when you get to see these pieces like this because it just verifies everything, doesn't it? I mean, it just... Uh, the 1883 cars they made in Fairmont, uh, they do not have a number of how many just stayed in the Los Angeles area for the small pump. First year for the Star Wars air cleaner, and Star Wars came out in 1977, 10 years later, but they always called it the Star Wars air cleaner. Wow. They called it that. I don't know if they called it that. Okay. They got the nickname of that during the years. Okay. Let's take a look at the, uh, I love the book. Okay. 
Let's take a look at the, uh, we can shut that. Thank you. Let's take a look at the interior. Now, Bob, this is just a show car, correct? I mean, you've just completed I just the... finished it. It's got 60 miles on it. 60 miles. Yeah, I still have to be redone on the car. I have to have these re -chromed. I haven't had a chance to get them out to get them re -chromed. But basically, everything that's in here has been redone and stuff for the console and the dashboard. The console and the dashboard. So this one cranks that down, and this one, show how that works. Pulls up. And then you push it out. Push it out. Now, I know for you that's old hat, but the kids today have no right. idea what, how that works. And then they don't have power dusters on the mirror, but we do have one here that... Oh, that's, that's cool. That's, that's just your rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. And 90% uh, of cars never had a passenger side mirror. Tag came uh, with the 400, it was one of the, I don't even believe that was an option, it was put in there. So that was standard with the 400. With the 400. really cool. Is it a cassette player? Excuse me? Is it a cassette player or no? No, that's just a plain AM radio. Okay. The cassettes did not come out till geez, 80s, I believe. Late okay. 70s, early 80s. It just the, the the top piece there for a second, I'll show you yeah. what I'm talking about. This almost yeah. looked like it was a cassette push. No, that's just a plain AM radio and it still works. I like the badging that they have on this, though. I mean, a little badge inside your dashboard. There's one on the. There's one right there on the door. I say, I'm still not completely finished with the car. There's but, still but stuff I mean, I it, have to yeah, do. it looks great. That's the nice. original miles on there, and I think it's got 60 miles on there since everything's been rebuilt. Motor was just rebuilt. Everything. Yeah, a little glare there. There we go. There wasn't one speck of rust on the car. Was the car, uh, and you shared already, it was a California car. Right. And the only thing that was changed on there, the floor on the car, I've got pictures of the floor, how solid it is, everything else. Uh, so this is a real find. Do people, because you're Buick Bob, just kind of find you and say, Bob, I think I got a car you like? No, I actually found this on Craigslist. The guy wanted an you know, outrageous amount of money for the car, and nobody called him up, and I just saw the car, it was in pieces, it was actually a basket case, but it did a uh, rotisserie paint job on it, but he never finished it. Okay, so he didn't finish it, and you did. Let's take a look under the hood. Share with me some of these unique pieces that you're just showing. And these hood scoops are specific to the GS Right, and they're non-functional. Non non-functional, but right. Uh, right. decorative. Yes, and it's an air injection reactor that's basically a small pump. Which is this? Which is that right there. And that so was, how did you find this piece, or was that with the car? All this was with the car. I knew it was a California car. I checked the numbers through Flint, through the uh, Sloan Museum in Flint. And that's where I got the number of 1,883 cars that were made out of Fairmont, California plant. But the only thing is about the pumps, mm -hmm. that all the pumps were put on for all, like this is an A body. They made pumps for all the cars. They never broke them down for how many went for a Grand Sport or went for a Skylark or a station wagon or anything else like that. And I said, the first year for power front disc brakes. Which is right here. Car. And then, like I said, this is a California, uh, they call it Star Wars Airplane. It was a nickname. But you know, like I said, Star Wars didn't come out to 77. Sure. But it wasn't called that until 77 or 80. But this is very unique because this has got the air breather on there. If you look at all the other ones, it's closed off. So I knew this was a rare car because of all the injection all the way through. And it goes, all this goes to blow extra air into the exhaust and into the carburetor. For California emissions at the time. To get, okay. cut down emissions on the cars. Let me show this side. Well, let's uh, fire it up, shall we? Okay. And these, pump, these uh, pipes coming across, the hoses are from that smog pump too? What? The, the hoses that come across this uh, valve cover? Yeah. Okay. Go right into the... While 
one here real quick. I don't know what that is. For a second, Bob, and we'll give it one little red. It sounds great already. Give it one red if you would, please. I'd like to shut that off because I don't want to get moisture on your carpet. That was a good sound. Yeah, it's, it's, it's everything you can read on it. I say it's just uh... Bring him back a Buick to life after it's sitting around for a long time. How, how gratifying is that? Because you've oh. done this for several cars. What what makes you, the Buick is your brand. How did this all happen? I have no idea. My wife and I started, we got together, we bought a 67 Buick Electra 14 years ago. And we did an arthritis foundation charity show and she said we needed a better car. And we bought my 56 Buick that you've done before. Yeah. And uh, it just snowballed from there. So it just kept going. Right. That one car started it all. Right. There was no family member who had Buicks or anything? No, my father was a Cadillac guy. <laughs> Classy. Yeah. Bob, if people like the channel, subscribe to it, hit the bell. Thanks so much for being on My Car yes, Story. It's been a pleasure. And Go mostly ahead. because of Buick, Bob, I bring a majority of this stuff down here. Yeah, I mean, you, we have the Buick sign there. We made up a sign over there for the Buick Club that's 20 feet, 20, 25 feet in the air. Thanks to you know, one of the dealers, gave us the sign, uh, the metal sign, and then I borrowed the flags from another dealer because they, they don't use them during the winter. And all the stanchions I use from a charity event that I do for the top of pale sites, they let me borrow the stanchions as well. But I mean, every year we have. So, how do people join, how do people join the Buick Club? Uh, it's online. We have applications here this weekend. Okay. And then, uh, like I say, I'm the, for the Buick Club itself, I'm. Just a member of the Chicagoland chapter, I bring the stuff down for him. Mm -hmm. But I'm modified head judge for Buick Club of America, that which is the is... main thing. And I just ran a show last year for Milwaukee. For the, I'm involved in the Buick Club, so it's something my wife and I both enjoy. Anything else you want to share with yeah, us? Yeah, make sure if you're thinking about coming out to Colorado, there's a nice show in Colorado this year in June, end of June. Where's with that the show Club. at? What city? Right outside of Denver. Got it. All right. Bob, always a pleasure. Great car as usual. Thanks so much for being on the channel. Thank you.